to Canada, to England, to Australia, to New Zealand have gone the British Empire and Commonwealth Games. Now in 1958, a message from the Queen, carried by a relay of runners, announces the celebration of the sixth British Empire and Commonwealth Games. It is carried along the roads of England to the southwest, to the Principality of Wales, over her mountains, down her lanes, through her villages, to the city of Cardiff. competitors have come to Cardiff from 35 countries, nearly 1,200 of us. Many of us strangers to everyone, except a few of our own contingent. But we are united in two things especially. We are all members of the Commonwealth of Nations, and we all have a common interest in sport. Our home for three weeks is the Empire Village, a Royal Air Force camp 50 miles outside Cardiff, on a high plateau overlooking the sea. There is much to do, even in the dawn of the first day. Muscles, cramped with long hours of travel, must be shaken free. For those from far away, there is a new atmosphere, new climate to get used to. And in the days ahead, before the games begin, the distance runners have more work to do than anyone else. Mileage makes champions. And already there are hundreds, sometimes thousands of miles, under the feet of these men. If the cyclists have some mechanical aid, they still have the furthest distance to travel in their competition. 120 miles of a switchback road circuit. The lanes around the Empire Village are already as busy as the streets of a city. Doctors say that the muscles of cyclists are finer than those of any other athletes. They are quicker in reaction, smoother and more supple, for there is no jarring in the circular motion. These games are something more than a great sporting event. They are the breeding ground for new friendships and new ideas. They are the central point at which people with the same interests can get together, discuss their problems, and give and take new ideas and new techniques. Some competitors are little known outside their own lands. Others are already world famous and have competed in Commonwealth and Olympic Games, such as the hurdler, Keith Gardner of Jamaica. For the Welsh women sprinters, there are sprint starts to perfect, so that even in the tenseness of the stadium, their reactions will be automatic. built empire pool, swimmers and divers get used to the Welsh water. Everywhere there is practice, practice, practice making perfect. A hundred and sixty miles to the north is Lake Padden, set beneath a long grey shadow of Snowdon, the highest mountain in Wales. 
And even if the sweating oarsmen are only going to see the back of the head of the man in front, the Coxes are going to get one of the finest views in a country of fine scenery. for sightseeing and more time for making friends. As the friendships grow with time, so does the tension rise as the opening day draws nearer. The games begin tomorrow, and on this last evening, time drags slowly for those of us who have to compete. Over and over again, we rehearse in our minds what we will have to do. It's comforting to talk to Macdonald Bailey, advisor and coach to the team from British Guyana. He has himself experienced many times before the tension and terrible loneliness which comes to you when you are by yourself on that narrow red ribbon of track. few can get their minds away from tomorrow, but for most of us there is an uneasy feeling in the pit of our stomachs. We have checked our equipment many times, but nobody can resist the temptation to do it again. We are all supremely fit after months of training. But until the games begin tomorrow, we feel like invalids whose only wish is to be wrapped in cotton wool until our time comes to go into the stadium and perform. officials and athletes, men and women, pass Prince Philip on the saluting base. Little teams, a sprinter from the Bahamas. And a weightlifter from Barbados. Finally, Wales, the host country. last runner in the long chain that have carried the baton from Buckingham Palace enters the stadium. His name has been secret, but here in Cardiff Arms Park, the home of Welsh rugby, the crowd can immediately recognise Ken Jones, a great sprinter but an even greater rugger player, who knows the turf of this stadium better than any other Welshman. He has heard the roar of a Welsh crowd many times, but never before has he had a reception quite like this. I hereby declare the sixth British Empire and Commonwealth Games open. runners have a long way to go under this hot July sun, 
26 miles, 385 yards. Through the streets of Cardiff and out into the country. Everywhere in Wales, even in the stadium, there is a hill. The big men, Ellis of England. and Iqbal of Pakistan throwing the hammer. Their duel has continued throughout the summer in many arenas. But this time, it is Ellis who is the winner. Get to your marks. This is the tensest moment of the games, the start of the 100 yards. The huge crowd is still and deathly quiet. Everything depends on the split-second reaction. Set. Nerves are taut. And someone breaks. Get to your mark. Nine and a half seconds, and it's over. Keith Gardner, Jamaica. Tom Robinson, Bahamas. And Mike Agostini, Canada. Gardner, Robinson, Agostini. The marathon runners are out in the country now. Bunched together, they gather strength from each other. Courage for the fearsome moment when one must break away and go out alone with only his own determination to stay him. From the hard roads of South Wales to the soft water of North Wales and eight men in unison. Canada. Australia. England. Powerful men battling in the eights. In the marathon, Dave Power of Australia has broken away and is heading back into the outskirts of Cardiff. His whole body is crying out for him to stop. But Barnard of South Africa is on his heels. Through the long day in the stadium, the supple high jumpers fight out their battle. Etolo of Uganda doing a western roll. Jilla Porter of Australia, the Olympic silver medalist, using the straddle style. And Hazley of Jamaica. Concentration. Concentration always. They've come a long way for these few seconds in the air. women's hundred yards. Betty Cuthbert of Australia, the Olympic gold medalist, is in the fourth lane, but the standard is so high that she can't even get a place. <laughs> Dave Power is back in Cardiff. He's tired, but he's broken the opposition and is out on his own. Last hill, downhill this time, and into the stadium for his final lap. It has been a long way. 
26 miles, 385 yards. When you have run that distance together, your opponent, whether he has beaten you or not, becomes your friend. It is not all toil and sweat and agony. On the cool green lawns by the River Taff, the older men of Northern Ireland and Kenya have just as intense a battle at bowls. different events are taking place. At Mainly Stadium, the 10-mile scratch race is in progress. It's a long way and no one wants to take the lead. Like gulls swooping away from a ship, they ride up the banking and let someone else do the work. Australia has covered 10 miles in 21 minutes, 40.2 seconds, a Commonwealth Games record. It's a speed of nearly 30 miles an hour. The big men are not only in the stadium, they are also lifting monstrous weights. Grief of South Africa tries a two-hand clean and jerk. The bar lifted cleanly to his shoulder and then jerked above his head. Blenman from Barbados. Originally, Barbados had not entered a team, but Blenman, in private life a bus conductor in London, arrived in Cardiff and said he and two of his countrymen wanted to compete. Cables flew back and forth until their entries were accepted. Blenman went on to win a gold medal, and one of his teammates a silver medal. From strength and skill to speed and artistry, and an epee bout between an English fencer and a Chinese fencer from Hong Kong. They are wired so that as soon as a hit is made, a light goes up on the judge's desk. He did not win a medal, but he will always remember that he competed in the Commonwealth Games. <laughs> 